Coming up, a 9th century Viking sword found in Poland. I get a Mora companion at long last. And then my favorite knife designer slash makers. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. I had two favorite comments this past week. First, uh, on my uh, full collection video, part eight on large fixed blade knives, Ancient IXL says, collecting is one thing, using is another. Have you ever used any knife to take a life? The Randall Model 1, Model 2, and M16 with the M1 blade are worthwhile knives, better in eight inch nowadays. I speak from personal experience. Uh, ancient IXL, no, I have not. I am a collector, and I have not used one, any of those knives to take a life. I, I have a feeling they'd all be pretty adept at it, and I have no doubt that uh, uh, if well-motivated, you know, uh, anything could happen. And then Eugene Krabs comes on. Always, always good for a smarmy uh, comment on Thursday Night Knives. Love the guy. Eugene says, I collect skulls for the skull throne. So, uh we have two different uh, points of view here. Uh, one, you know, a pretty serious user in ancient IXL and uh, Eugene Krabs, who's uh, making light. And I appreciate both of you because if indeed uh, the eight inch is, uh, is nowadays more preferable, well, I'm, I'm glad to have that information. I love, I love all my eight inch knives. For sure, but I don't have any Randalls in that measurement. Anyway, Ancient IXL and Eugene Krabs, thank you both for watching and commenting. All right. All that said, um, ugh, gee whiz, let us get to a pocket check. In my front right pocket today was the Model 2 the beautiful and accomplished Model 2 uh, from American Blade Works. Uh, you say, why do you say accomplished? We see how it's beautiful. Well, I, I, that might not be the right word, but for the Model 1, Michael Martin, um, American knife maker out of North Carolina, um, went through six iterations of the knife, got it in hands of a whole bunch of different people, and uh, really learned what uh, a great folding knife is composed, made of, uh, how it's made and uh, the, the best way to do it. And uh, after six iterations, he nailed it. And each one of those, I had uh, almost every one of those iterations in my hands at one point were amazing, but uh, six was was the final one. And for the Model 2, he just landed right on it. What I mean is he didn't do um, a whole bunch of versions of this knife. Uh, he sort of designed it and created it. And it's a titanium liner lock with this beautiful sheep's foot blade uh, you can you can see some of the uh, milling striations there but you don't feel them and it's wickedly sharp and it's magna cut steel and it's actually one of the uh, finest edges i have on um on my folders i have a lot of big bulky uh you know hard use folders but think uh think the edge geometry of the um the atom by uh, Three Rivers Manufacturing. Very thin, very slicey, very capable. And in this beautiful Art Deco package, I always mention how closed this makes a beautiful knife as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. Next up, in my uh, left pocket, in its nestled in its beautiful little, little leather slip here, uh, is the Sharpshooter Jack by... Jack Wolf Knives. This, of course, is the second release of this design. This was the very first design ever to be released, the Sharpshooter Jack, this uh, very uh, beautiful and modern um, created gunstock jack. Well, in this iteration, you've got uh, five different new treatments in terms of styling. Uh, I love this PVD coated black anodized with the blue Arctic Storm carbon fiber. It's stunning. Um, but uh, you also get on this one a long pull instead of a nail nick. Uh, you get a triple fluted bolster up front, and that bolster is a little bit longer than the first one. And uh, you get superlative action. 
I don't know if holding it in front of the mic ever makes a difference, but the walk and talk on this is insane. I would put this at an eight uh, in, in my totally uh, arbitrary um, range of pulls here. It's very, very stout, uh, a bit stouter even than the original, which I also have uh, incidentally uh, in blue carbon fiber. Uh, this was just released this past Friday, if you're listening to this uh, when 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 it drops. So on the 20th of, uh, I'm sorry, the 19th of January, 2024, these uh, these new Sharpshooter Jacks were, were released. You got to check them out. Two titanium versions, uh, this blue carbon fiber. There's a red, white, and blue kind of 80s carbon fiber. That's not the 80s. It's a red, white, and blue carbon fiber. And then there's there's one last material I can't remember, but it's interesting and it's cool as always. Uh, so go check those out at the, uh, at his different, uh, at the Jack Wolf knives dealers. Jeez. Oh, Pete, let me take one more sip of coffee. That'll help. All right. Next in my waistband was, um, a knife I got at blade show this past year, 2023, uh, the absolutely incredible fire ant, Handmade by Dirk Pinkerton. Here it is. It's a triple-edged Warncliffe or reverse Tonto. Not Warncliffe. Uh, uh, triple-edged Sheepfoot or reverse Tonto. Um, I, I'm starting to see why people say reverse Tonto. Okay, because this part right here at the at the top of the spine is an angle as opposed to a curve a worn cliff would be a constant curve from the start of the blade to the tip a sheep's foot would come out straight like this and then curve down um, but here it's a reverse tanto a reverse americanized tanto i'm starting to see the light though i hate the term and i've been complaining about it for years I'm starting to see why people say that so anyway this i guess i'll say is a reverse tanto triple edged Camera keeps wanting to look at that model too. It is beautiful, but so is this. Uh, black and blue rich light handle. Um, very, very thin behind all of these edges, except the front one. That front one's pretty stout, but uh, uh, you're getting into anything you want with this. Uh, they made a Fire Ant version. They made a folding version of the Fire Ant uh, over at Kaiser a few years back. I don't think you can get that anymore. Uh, of course, it wasn't triple-edged like mine, uh, but uh, always cool to see the um size differences between the fixed blades that i carry and the uh, uh, folders that i carry it's pretty often that the fixed blade is smaller than than anything else last on my on my uh well this was in my back pocket most of the day my esk my emotional support knife was the sen cut arc blast cool little knife that was sent to me by sen cut uh last month and uh totally unexpected and very much appreciated. Uh, aluminum handle, beautifully anodized here in blue. You can get it in raw, uh, sort of silver aluminum, black with a black blade or red with a black blade. Um, just a great, perfect little button lock. And I hate to use the word perfect, but for what it is, a little EDC, this is a perfect, perfect little knife because you've got a deeply hollow ground, already thin, but deeply hollow ground, broad, um, leaf shaped blade with that tip down uh, down low there, and then you have the uh, the thumb stud, you have the flipper tab, you have the lock itself. You can depress to open it up. So it's a fidgeter's daydream, fidgeter's daydream here, but very very sharp. Nine uh, CR eighteen MOV, nine CR eighteen MOV blade steel, uh, really nicely sculpted and ergonomic handle. A great deep carry pocket clip, though shiny, a little shiny for my taste. I always uh, would rather have um, a matte uh, matte finish on my clips or a black clip. But in any case, this uh, that's just because I don't like to attract too much attention. Uh, because if I get the attention, uh, there will be a lot more attention coming after it. Uh, so that is the uh, Sun Cut Arc Blast. That was my um, emotional support knife. Let me know what your emotional support knife is and what it was today. Not everyone carries four knives on them. Some people, as we know from Thursday Night Knives, carry up to 10 knives on them. Um, I always have a backpack with me that's got knives in there. So I'm, I'm never uh, underknifed. But let me know what you carry. 
uh, put it in the comments below. Let me know what what uh, makes you feel right. Sometimes just doing this and driving everyone around you crazy makes you feel right. So uh, let me know what that is. All right. That is uh, my pocket check. And let me know what your pocket check is. Okay. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some new knives coming down the pike from some of our favorite manufacturers. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Krein K9 Model 6. This full tang fixed blade from Krein Knives is built from D2 tool steel and includes a carbon fiber patterned Bolteron sheath. And while supplies last, they are specially priced. The Filoso Dagger Knife by Beg Knives perfectly balances form and function. It has a comfortable, sculpted handle and a double ground blade with three available finishes. And the newest release from Jack Wolf Knives, the Sharpshooter Jack. The Sharpshooter Jack is a modern slip joint with hollow ground CPM S90V, unique handle covers, and integral titanium liners and bolsters. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Just a quick note uh, before we get to Knife Life News, I was talking about the Sharpshooter Jack, and I couldn't remember what that fifth configuration was. And then that liner from Knife Ship Free reminded me. Uh, the, the last one is a carbon fiber that glows. So it's got glow in the dark uh, elements in the carbon fiber. Uh, a first for Jack Wolf Knives. I love it. That's very cool. Uh, I certainly don't need my knives to glow in the dark. Not if it's a quiet storm like this one. Look at that. That is so beautiful. I love this thing. All right, putting this down. Let's get on to Knife Life News. Speaking of uh, traditional um, designs and traditional patterns, Boker is coming out with another cool Barlow. They've had a number of Barlow's and Barlow um, inspired knives come out over the past couple of years. This one, man, this takes the cake. It's a beauty. Uh, this is a modern tribute to the legendary traditional pattern. We can see here just from looking at it um, on the screen, there is a uh, you've got the traditional sleeve board uh, sort of outline of the handle and it is titanium. You've got full uh, faux bolster uh, that extends a third of the length. And then you have this sort of, it sort of looks like wood grain, but they're calling it that jig. It looks like a uh, barn doors sort of jigging uh, on the rest of the handle. And then it's got a minimal flipper tab, much like, um, uh, uh, much like you see on, um, uh, Oh, oh man, <laughs> it's now well, much like you see on on the Quakens, uh, the little flipper tab on the Quaken before they started making it um, themselves. People would do their their little uh, their little micro um, micro tabs. Anyway, please forgive that ramble. But you've got a clip point blade, beautifully done here in uh, Magna Cut, two point five six inches. Uh, very low profile flipper is what I was trying to get at. You've got a, a, a frame lock and a sculpted tie clip. I think this thing is a true winner. And uh, Vero Designs, that's what I was trying to get at. Vero Engineering uses a lot of those real low profile uh, flippers. If you're used to them, it's the same thing here. It doesn't protrude from the handle. It just sits there and waits to be deployed. Uh, so, yeah, very cool. Uh, this is called the Boker BRLW, so Burlo. Barlow. You, you get it. Uh, very excited. All right. Next up, this one is really exciting because I used to like this knife uh, back in the day and never got it. And here is a trimmed down version, which is uh, exactly what the doctor ordered for this. Uh, it's the Topps Shadow Hunter, a beautiful little clip point uh, fixed blade knife. It's got a, a really wicked profile to me. I, it's so up my alley. So it's a clip point buoy. Uh, they're calling it kind of a harpoon. I don't see it. I just see an upswept clip and an upswept uh, spine meeting at a peak, but I don't see a harpoon. Uh, in any case, that's a 4.5 inch 1095 uh, blade with uh, beautiful micarta, uh, natural tan micarta on it with the red liners. Um, but this one was one that they, uh, I think they discontinued it in 2008 or something like that. Uh, 
and it was a big chunker. You know how Topps knives used to be uh, blocky. This was one of those, but it had that general shape. Really happy to see them bringing this back. And in in this uh, slim down version, uh, it's got a taco uh, Kydex sheath. And uh, this might be one that I actually get. I haven't gotten a Tops in a little while. Um, I'm trying to be a little more disciplined in my purchasing. Um, but I'm always game for a sweet new clip point Tops. So maybe the Shadow Hunter will have a home in my collection. All right, next up to Kershaw, uh, their 2024 lineup has been announced. And uh, we're going to talk about a couple of folders, three of the folders uh, here. The first one is the one we've heard the most about lately. Uh, a lot of our trusted voices love this. And, and to look at it, I think it's beautiful. Luckily, it's uh, it's got a three-inch blade, which is under my, uh, my need to get under, uh, you know, measurement there. Okay, so Bel Air like the like the Chevy 57 Chevy Bel Air blade is three inches long it's a modified worn cliff it is yes magna cut very cool I like that they're doing this Duralock their Duralock is outstanding uh, I have the Kershaw Iridium it's one of my favorite knives from 2023 and it has that that bar lock of theirs uh, the Duralock is just Outstanding. So this uh, with G10 handle scales and Magna Cut, I'm sorry, aluminum handle scales, Magna Cut, um, and uh, that blade shape. This is definitely intended for the enthusiast class. Uh, I really do hope that they make a larger version of this. I will be 100% all over it. Uh, let's scroll down to the next knife, which is the Launch 19. Can you believe that? 19. They have 19 in this lineup of um, out the side automatics. Uh, this one has a really cool two-piece handle, uh, part aluminum uh, where the action is happening and part G10 uh, in the tail end. Um, uh, you know, they say they say it's like the mullet, you know, business up front, party in the rear. It's, it's that same sort of uh, effect here. 3.3 inch clip point blade, kind of a modernized long clip with that weird swedge, a weird but appealing swedge that Kershaw's been doing for the last, I don't know, three or four years. Interesting stepped spine to the handle. Whole thing looks extremely comfortable. Um, that's 154 CM blade steel, the standard for the um, for the launch lineup. And then let's go all the way to the bottom uh, the, where the live wire out the front is. Here, as we scroll by, we'll see a bunch of cool looking but um assisted opening knives they're all very nice looking but just not not up my alley these days uh but this one uh really nice uh that's the out the front i do not have this and have not experienced it though i've heard great things about it uh this is part of two line extensions uh so the live wire line uh that that out the front line is now going to be in magna cut and carbon fiber that's going to be an option so that's an expansion of that line and the awesome iridium that i was just talking about uh is being reverse tantoized and i cannot wait for that uh, i am already a huge fan of the iridium and as i mentioned as i was uh waxing poetic about about this knife uh the pinkerton fire ant i love that reverse tanto shape so uh i will really be looking forward to that and no doubt getting that all right, that's it for Kershaw, and that's it for new knives, but I want to show you this. This is cool. Uh, came across this in Knife Magazine. Uh, our friends over there uh, always printing up interesting articles. Uh, I say printing up. I I rarely get the, the print version, uh, but the online version is cracking. Okay, so they found in Poland while they were dredging uh, the largest river in Poland, the Vistula River. Probably not pronouncing that correctly, but uh, they were dredging and they found this exceptional example of a 9th or 10th century Viking sword. And this is one of 170 uh, and possibly 100, up to 100, up to possibly 177, but there are definitely 170 swords that are confirmed with the Ulfbre, Ulfbert, U L F B E R H T. Ulfbert uh, insignia on the sword. And uh, we've heard about this. We've actually talked about this on the show in the past. They found one a few years back, I think in Germany. Uh, 
Uh, but if you're if you're watching the show, you can see the small uh, small space of the handle where the handle where the hand fits in between the quillions and the five three lobed uh, pommel there. Uh, just a classic uh, Viking sword uh, that that Ulfbert insignia or or uh, designation, I should say, um, really speaks to the sword's quality and materials. Um, in the day when it came out, that was a maker, and then it became more like a um, more of a generic term, like Kleenex. After a while, it's like, oh well, this is an Ulfbert uh, worthy Viking sword, according to this article. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, you may know that uh, for Vikings, swords were not necessarily common, or I should say, commoner Viking types did not have swords; they used their axes and their and their um, yeah, their axes. Uh, and and axes and saxes or scramma saxes. These big, uh, beautiful swords were um, more um, signifiers of wealth and status. Uh, so interesting to find that. Always looking forward to seeing. Uh, it seems like every couple of weeks uh, they're finding some cool old sword or cache of ancient weaponry somewhere in the world. All right, uh, let's get on to the state of the collection. But before we do, I'd like to say, uh, if you want to become a part of the Knife Junkie podcast and help support the show, you can do that on Patreon. We've been giving away some really great knives. Uh, if you if you join up at our highest tier of support, the Gentleman Junkie, uh, you get entered into a knife, uh, a knifely, a monthly knife giveaway. And uh, let's see, we recently gave away a, a ProTech Malibu donated to the channel by Northern Knives. Uh, we gave away a, a Cayman XXL recently donated to, to us by Off Grid Knives. We've given away a lot of knives donated to us by This Old Sword, who we all know has an amazing collection. Uh, so be sure to check us out on Patreon. Quickest way to do that is to scan the QR code on the screen right here or go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'll repeat that very complex address. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Hey, what's up? Uh, uh, okay, so I was just uh, in the country with my family for a long weekend. And I finally got a Mora companion, a Mora knife. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's an odd, it's not an odd story at all. Uh, but I always thought I would just throw one of these in my Amazon uh, cart one day and just be done with it. That's how I got my first little red handled wood Mora. Uh, Moras have never been a, that compelling to me uh, because I like fighting knives. Uh, but when I found out that they make great quote unquote fighting knives or self-defense knives from the great and powerful Ed Calderon, my interest in them uh, began to peak. Anyway, uh, we were at an antique fair, one of those indoor places that has numerous different stores. Very, very cool place. And I walked into a, a, uh, a kind of an army Navy like place and a former Marine working behind the counter had some, had, had some of the most incredible gas station knives and um, I couldn't bring myself to buy one of those, but he had a few Moras and he had those uh, red plastic handled ones. Um, and then he had the companion in green, which is what I've always um, wanted uh, in a Mora. I don't need anything more Mora than this in my uh, collection than this Mora, but I'm glad I got it. Super sharp, man. This, these things are insanely sharp. They just come down to one atom. Uh, you know, it's a Scandinavian grind, which means once the grind starts, uh, it doesn't stop until it hits the other side. So it's a zero ground bevel. Uh, so, yeah, it does get down to one atom thick right there at the edge. Uh, you can quote me on that. Uh, this one is uh, stainless steel. So uh, a lot of Moras are in high carbon. This is in stainless, uh, which leads me to believe it's probably in the 12 uh, C or, or, or 14 C family because, um, well, it's from Sweden and I'm just making assumptions, a great grippy handle, uh, gr uh, lots of room to really hold. I mean, you could use this knife all day long, uh, carving wood and doing whatever you do out at the campsite. 
Um, but you could also use it in this reverse grip with the with the tip down and the edge in. Um, and uh, it's very light, uh, pretty thin, easy to pack. Um, everything about this knife is is really great. It's a, this could be a one fixed blade solution is what I'm getting at. And it won't break the bank. I spent uh, in person 24 bucks. So you buy it online, it's going to be even less. Um, that is the Mora Companion. And I'm really psyched to have it. Oh, by the way, great sheath. Just a great plastic drop sheath. Uh, it has this little clip. So you can, <laughs> you can clip it to your sweatpants while you're cruising around the home cleaning. Uh, that has never happened here. Uh, or you can clip it to your pack or just throw it in your bag. It's a great, great knife. It would be great in the truck if you have a truck or a car if you have a car. Awesome knife. Okay. Uh, oh, my goodness gracious. All right. The next one that I do, I, I can't believe I didn't even uh, give, to, give to Jim for notes here. And I'm, I'm ashamed because this one is so cool, but you can roll with this. This is the new Pinkerton inversion. Uh, Dirk Pinkerton has made uh, his first inversion, which was a Picol style knife, Picol, Picol style folder and very odd looking to the uninitiated eye uh, made by Kaiser. Um, this one I got in a trade with Dave. I uh, wanted this knife so badly. And uh, it's got this titanium handle stepped uh, uh, terraced texturing. Thank you, Jim. And uh, it's got that uh, reverse Tonto blade there. But he uh, this this went out of print with Kaiser, and he wanted to uh, make an inversion, a folding inversion under his own uh, label. So this was a prototype. I've shown this one off many times. Uh, this beautiful green one. He started experimenting with the blade because he heard from people like Ryan Atkinson or Fieldworks, as you may know him on Instagram. Um, he's been on this show. Great guy, a uh, bodyguard to the stars for sure. Right now he's on Taylor Swift uh, detail, I believe. Uh, but um, he gave back readings that this reverse Tonto, though very sharp and nasty, uh, did not penetrate pig carcasses quite as well as something more like this. So Dirk, uh, and he asked others like Dave and myself, and and I also said that I liked this better. I believe Dave did as well. So um, he created this. So this is the inversion. Uh, this was a pre-order uh, that you got on his website. Um, and it's finally here, and it's so great. I don't mean finally like I was like, where is it? Uh, but I was very much looking forward to it. Now, you can see the handle changed a little bit from uh, the Kaiser. Um, but is very much the same as this um, prototype here. You've got this very wide chamfering all the way around the periphery of the handle, uh, which makes it very comfortable. You have a, I'm going to try and get it to focus, an orange peel texture, which is so nice. I've never had orange peel on anything, and I love this. I love the way it feels and looks. Um, and then, um, you know, it's got the blade and the blade is uh, S35VN. He asked what serial number I wanted. I always love the number 44. So serial number 44 on there. Thank you very much, sir. Frame lock. I love that it's a black uh, sculpted clip. There's also a, uh, a deep carry that it ships with a thumb stud instead of that wave opener if you don't want the wave opener. And it also comes with a, a uh, deep carry fold over pocket clip if you don't like this. But I love the black, first of all, the sculpted clip works great, um, just enough retention, um, but the black too. You're already attracting attention with the silver ring, so the black kind of tamps it down a little bit. Uh, but the ring, there it is, the ring. Uh, that's the 400-pound gorilla in the room, or 800-pound, I guess it is. I love it. You know, I've been vacillating on rings for a long time, ever since talking to Ed Calderon. And... Uh, uh, he said people he've seen he has seen people really damage their fingers using these in dynamic situations. He called it degloving, I believe it's called, where, where the skin comes off the bone. Horrifying. Uh, but here it's so perfectly aligned. You know, it's not at the end, it's coming off the side, just as a ring should, just in line with the fist. There, there takes zero reaccommodation when making your fist. So you know, with the thumb up here, I, I believe this is super, super secure. I think if you have giant fingers, you might find that this 
ring is a little tight, but I do not have giant fingers and it is perfect for me. I, I think it's beautiful to look at as well. And you know that that means something to me. Um, yep. The ringed inversion. Very excited about this. Jim, thanks for whipping that up. Appreciate that. And uh, I'm, I'm very honored to have this prototype as well. Um, let's put that over here. And then I got here. I'm going to go. I'm going to go next to the old busted knife. Get this out of the way real quick. Um, when I got the Mora knife, as I said, we were in an antique uh, mall, and we went into an antique uh, section. My my younger daughter, uh, nine years old, found a typewriter and an old dial phone, and she's wanted both of those things for a while. I don't know. It's for play acting. Maybe she wants to be a, a 1940s secretary or something, or or, or uh, you know who knows anything power broker from this a different time but anyway she's sitting there typing 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 and i hear Hing! she like did the thing with the and first of all i should have known like you don't type without paper in there and this is an antique store but i was looking for knives and i was barely paying attention and then i hear the carriage return and then i hear <laughs> and some piece of silver that was or not silver but crystal that was also on that table came crashing down the ladies made me feel terrible about it. So I ended up buying this busted old Barlow uh, that some farmer out in central Virginia used for years and years and years and years. And it's a hawk bill and it's been sharpened to nearly nothing. Love it. And then it had an old, uh, what I presume is a pen blade in there broken off. Little stamped, hollow stamped uh, bolsters there and uh, cheap plastic sort of uh, um, saw cut plastic but it's cool to have i like it because it was in some someone's pocket for years and years and got so much use and it meant something to them as a tool as something just to you know make a living or whatever and i love it for that of course i'll never carry it and use it but i just like to have it all right the next two uh, i'm going to do uh in concert here uh i as you know i've been in this swiss army knife phase and uh, so I wanted to check out these rakes. Rake, of course, is uh, is is the knife company from Phoenix Flashlights, spelled R U I K E, which you might think should be pronounced Ruik, uh, but it is Rake. Okay, so this is the keychain knife. Uh, I got this one first. Very impressive. Uh, here I'll put it up next to a Swiss Army knife uh, classic SD. So a little bit bigger, definitely a little uh, fatter and heavier. But if you're familiar with a, an SD, that's uh, that's what that's what it compares to, I guess. Uh, but it has a great blade of 12C27 and a hollow ground, beautiful shape, drop point blade there. Uh, nice action on it, good uh, good snap. And then the next tool is a great pair of scissors. Now note on the rakes, you are. When you're pushing the scissors down with your thumb, you're going against the lock, as opposed to the Swiss Army knife where you're where you're going against it or uh, into it, I should say. Let me pull this out and show you what I mean. Like on this, uh, when you when you reach all the the end of that, you're going against the lock and it's not moving any further. With this, you could technically close it, but not much of an issue unless you're trying to cut leather with it or something crazy like that. Um, so great little pair of scissors and then this little multi-tool on the end has a cord cutter that's very sharp right there. It's got a uh, screwdriver pry bar and a wire bender, that little notch there, and a cap lifter. G10. Uh, I had it on my keys for a, for a minute, but it was just a little bit too heavy. Uh, so I, I ended up putting this little fob on it and it's great to just drop in the pocket. Uh, the second one is a bigger one, and they have one even bigger than this, but this is comparable to the 91. What is this 91 or 93? Yeah, uh, it's comparable to the 93, so the Alox um, Swiss Army knives, and the large Alox uh, Victorinox knives. This is called the M42G for green, I believe, uh, but really nice 12C27 uh, blade, hollow ground. Let me compare that real quick with this. 
so you can get an idea this versus victorinox so bigger blade like much more substantial blade uh, and then this one also has uh, a saw just like the swiss army uh, the victorinox saw very similar pattern and same deployment with the tab that extends over the end allows you to just grab it like that and then there is a pair of scissors very nice scissors working the same way and getting the tension off the back lock spring or it's not a lock it's a spring uh, and then you've got the uh, traditional opening tool this does have a half stop kind of a sloppy half stop or soft half stop i'll say uh, but you've got the wire stripper and the cap lifter and the screwdriver and then over here <laughs> this is this is they're calling it like a package opener and then a a two-dimensional um, Phillips screwdriver. But for me, that that curved blade with the serrations is great for um, going, uh, um, well, I'll say it, uh, circumscribing or circumcising a bottle of wine. You know, you got to take the foil off. This thing is perfect. It's at the right angle and you just turn it and it takes the foil off really nicely. I did that last night. Okay, and then here you've got this little uh, uh, key ring slash um, lanyard hole. And if you don't want it, it folds away nicely. Look at these tweezers, giant tweezers by comparison. Oh, wrong, wrong tool. There you go. By comparison to the Victorinox tweezers. Look at this. Big difference there. So these tweezers are great. Uh, you could you could tweeze your unibrow, uh, no problem. Here we've got the uh, <clears throat> got the corkscrew that works great. Tried that one out last night, and then over here you have a great awl slash punch with the sewing eye, and then a glass breaker. Uh, this thing is great. I absolutely love it. They have uh, they have like ten different versions of this with pliers, with different things, uh, with uh, different different tools and sizes. Uh, there's one larger than this with locking tools, a locking blade, and I think the saw might lock. But they're big and they're chunky. Here, this is a four-layer tool. This this rake is a four-layer tool, and here it is next to a five-layer tool, Victorinox. So let's see. They're about the same width, so you get a whole other layer of tools in Victorinox uh, for the same width. But if you want to change a pace. You want differently a different shaped blade or maybe a knife, uh, a multi-tool that is much more blade oriented. Um, I'd say check it out. These things are great and they're they're competitively priced. So these are the rake, um, rake models here. And you can check them out on on I got mine on Amazon. They have a whole bunch of them. So check them out. And they come in black and green, uh, no red. I love the I love the different uh I got to say, I love the look of the Swiss Army knives, but uh, something about these rakes are really, really appealing. OK, so speaking of really appealing, let's get to this. It's 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 going to be a quick discussion, but my favorite designers slash makers. Now, you will notice right off the bat that there are some notable um, omissions, uh, people that I didn't put on the list, not because I don't think they're great. I mean, you won't see Lynn Thompson on this list and you're saying what? Bob DeMarco, no Lynn Thompson. You won't see Lynn Thompson. You won't see Carrie Orifice. You won't see Sal Glesser or Rick Hinderer, but I absolutely love their knives. And, uh, you know, I have some that I would consider, you know, there's, you do not get rid of those knives. So it's not that I, it's not that these people are not worthy of this list. It's that I had to cut it somewhere. And, and these are just the ones that sing to my heart. The, the most. Let's start off with Ernest Emerson, and I'll put out two, two of his knives here. This was the very first one I got and the very first one that I was ever aware of. This was maybe his third, uh, third knife once he was making tacticals, um, and, and it's the Commander. This one is from 2000. God, this 23, 24 years old, this damn knife. Wow. So still great, still stout, uh, created a little bit differently than they do now, uh, made more like a custom knife where um, to get to the uh, structural screws, you have to take off the, the G10 first. And, uh, but 
just an amazing blade, amazing design. And of course you have the wave feature. And uh, that was a happy accident um, that he created there. Uh, that was supposed to be a parrying tool or a, a, a blade catch um, for other knives if you're in a knife-on-knife a -knife conflict and their, their blade gets caught in there. Uh, but very quickly, the SEALs he was designing this for, the Navy SEALs he was designing this for, uh, realized that it was better as a, a, a pocket deployer and B, as a bottle cap opener. So, uh, so the wave has always been there, but it wasn't for its original purpose. And then here we have the Elvia, a, um, a collaboration with Ed Calderon, a very strange looking knife. Uh, if you're not used to seeing that Pakal style thing, like we saw with the inversion, uh, same concept here. Uh, but I show these two knives. This is with an aftermarket uh, wave feature. The first version did not have the wave. I uh, just had a thumb disc. And then these are aftermarket scales. Um, from Tom Engelson, check him out on Instagram. But uh, I want to show the the just the pure dedication to um, well weaponry. That that's that is what that is what Emerson makes unabashedly. They make they make folding tactical knives for fighting, self defense, and utility, kind of in that order. Um, and uh, so the versatility of design and and just that year after year after year, there's this consistency in the design and a lot of it has to do with superior ergonomics and and incredible uh blade design and all of these things are based on ernest emerson's vast experience as a martial artist and fighter and um, practitioner of uh, blade centered martial arts uh, so much so that he ended up creating his own system uh kind of amalgamizing all those so Ernest Emerson, uh, he was on um, episode 94 of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, you got to check that out. He was also on a long town hall uh, back in 2020. But do check out uh, episode 94. Pretty awesome. All right. Next up, I mentioned him before, Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, Dirk uh, has it all as far as I'm concerned. He's, you know, in, in acting to have the triple threat, the singer, dancer, um, actor well here he is a uh he is a designer and a maker and uh, uh and a business owner so he's got his own um shingle <laughs> he, he makes his knives under his own name dirk pinkerton designs here like you have with this he has a bunch of designs licensed and oem'd through uh, makers like uh, Beyond EDC here, this is Asymmetrical Line, or Kaiser, or Concept, or you name it. And then he hand grinds knives and hand makes knives that are exquisite. He is very well respected uh, by his peers in the knife making world for his excellent skills at the grinder. This is his handmade cave bear uh, that I got at Blade 2021. Such an incredible knife. Uh, and and so I not only does he have these skills of design and of um, grinding, but he's got his eyes like uh, Lynn Thompson on the past. And he takes these beautiful uh, time tested uh, designs like the Navaja that the Span Spaniards started using when they could no longer carry swords to settle their beefs. They settled uh, they carried these giant clip point locking blades in their cummerbunds and so uh, those are classic knives of history here we see it reinterpreted in a modern design sense and with modern materials and manufacturing that's dirk pinkerton uh, and then here you see uh, a lot of filipino influence as well as middle eastern influence in um, indonesian and middle eastern and filipino in this i mean like so He's really scouring the globe and, and, and finding great blade designs all throughout history and incorporating them into modern designs or modernizing them. And yeah, so for all of those reasons and the fact that he's also just a nice guy, uh, Dirk Pinkerton is, is one of my favorite designers. He was on the show, episode 88, episode 362. You want to hear Dirk Pinkerton talk about his work? and design philosophy. Check those shows out. Next is Ben Belkin. Ben, ben Belkin. Um, 
Love the guy. He's a great guy, too. I mean, I guess a lot of these guys are great guys. I've talked to many of them in this list, so maybe I'll stop saying that. <laughs> Let's just assume they're great guys. Ben Belkin is one of them, and he is uh, the guy who brought us this knife. The reason I'm showing you this one here is that we all know that Jack Wolf Knives has classic design with modern interpretation, traditional design, modern interpretation. So we've seen uh, this gun stock in the gunslinger that just came out. That is a very traditional design in modern dress and uh, manufacturing. But here with, with the cyborg Jack here, this is his own design. So he's taking uh, all of those years of, um, of traditional knife design, all of those different patterns, and then looking at modern knife design too with the angles in this handle and created this pattern all on his lonesome. So uh, how many people do you know who have created their own traditional pattern? So I wanna see more of this. Like the handle is incredibly comfortable. Uh, it's like a sow belly, but uh, angular. And those angles actually really feel good in hand and uh, make this a very comfortable knife and also incredibly unique. This is a perfect example, but same but different, which is what we all want. But this is this is same, but very different. And then you look at that blade, that is kind of a, uh, a Lanny's clip style, clip point blade, uh, but also kind of a Tonto, almost looks like a Tonto, if this were a little bit pointier, you know? So a very unique things happening in this design. And, uh, and then he just flexes, boom, and then does a frame lock flipper. This frame lock front flipper. This is the after hours jack, a, a based a folding uh, locking version based on the midnight jack. Uh, so he's got versatility and uh, and you know so he can do these locking knives, the bolster locking, the folder, uh, the frame locking knives, and the traditional style. Um, slip joints relying on the kick as opposed to a back stop uh, a uh, stop pin so the man can do it he's got he's got it all so very very versatile plus man he packages them beautifully and he knows how to do business he's a great businessman so ben belkin is definitely one of my favorite designers there you go great walk and talk on this knife Next up, we're going to talk about Les George. Les George. Here's, here's the dagger that most recently uh, Les George came out with in a production sense. Uh, this is with um, Spartan Blades, and it's the Marine Raider dagger. Uh, based on the historical Marine Raider dagger that was ill-fated due to bad materials and uh, you know bad build at the beginning of the war, uh, but very great design very cool design just needed to be updated and here he has updated it in 1095 blade steel um, modern manufacturing uh, a um, injection molded handle with great texturing a full tang construction including the quillions the quillions are also that that guard is also full tang so everything about this is a hundred percent more robust than the original um and this is what uh les george does he loves daggers. He designs, he makes tons of daggers. He's, he does, he casts handles like the, uh, the 1918 trench dagger and makes daggers. He does dagger collaborations with people. He does EDC daggers. And then he does a whole host of folders like this right here. And by the way, daggers aren't the only fixed blades he makes. That's his obsession though. Um, he he has this new version of the M2 trench knife. That's really crazy. Not the one with the knuckles, but the uh, the one with the uh, slanted handle, the classic. But here's the VSEP uh, based on his, um, this is one of the first mid-tech knives out there, meaning he had the, uh, the blanks laser cut or jet uh, water jet, and then he did everything else. Um, so half manufactured, half handmade, and... Uh, this one was based on his rock eye design, which we now see in uh, production with ProTech as an, an automatic and here as the mid-tech. So really his, his design um, 
uh, the things he's interested in, i.e. these historical daggers, and then his design eye just um, really resonate with me. And then the quality of the build of this very uh, complex thing, it's not easy to do a folder handmade, is just incredible. So Les George is definitely on there. And he's funny. Uh, he said uh, he's a former Marine, uh, uh, explosive ordnance disposal. He said, uh, first time I interviewed him, I was a little starstruck. I said, it's really nice to meet you. Oh, my gosh. And he's like, he's like, you know what? Here's here's the most famous pro bowler. And here's or here's the least famous pro bowler. Here's the most famous knife maker. Uh, and so he disavowed me immediately of any any uh, any of that. All right. Next up is Andrew Demko. Now, Andrew Demko is why I didn't list Lynn Thompson. Lynn Thompson, no doubt, has has uh, designed and developed some of my, the absolute best knives of all time and my favorite knives. But Andrew Demko was the one who designed uh, for me the Golden Age knives, uh, uh, the the Cold Steel Golden Age knives. Uh, but here I'm showing the um, AD20 for the innovation of the Shark Lock. So he innovated. Uh, the shark lock, he innovated the triad lock. Two of the strongest locks going, uh, the shark lock being incredibly fidgety as well. Uh, the the um, triad lock being just legendary for its strength. A lot of people call it the strongest lock in the business. Um, but I'm showing you this. This is one of his cold steel designs, the Frenzy, based on a Japanese uh, helmet breaker or helmet breaching knife. Um, and it looks to me like a gununting with that downward swooping hawkbill blade. But here we have innovation, we have beauty, and then we also have that fascination with knives from the past. Andrew Demko has designed uh, Tantos and Navajas and all of his versions of classic knives too. So uh, I love Andrew Demko's work for the for the for all of that, the innovation the looks and the history. Uh, he was on episode 20, 118 and 234. Man, the, a lot of these guys have been on here. I'm very proud of that. Next up is a guy that I, I've i tried uh, to get on the show and we came close and and then things happened, but I'm going to, I've doubled back numerous times. Let's hope he comes and joins, comes on the show because I want to talk to Charles Marlowe. Charles Marlowe, here, here is a the only version of a Charles Marlowe I will probably ever get because his custom knives are extremely difficult to come by and expensive and exclusive. And um, But this is The Squail by Boker, uh, Boker's version of the Charles Marlowe Squail. And he just creates folding knives that look like this. <laughs> and they are just positively gorgeous. I don't have much to say about them because I've never, uh, I've never held a real one. Uh, not, I should say a custom one, but this Boker, I mean, Boker can really knock it out of the park. And this is one of those, uh, one of those productions, just uh, an astounding build. It is, um, VG 10 blade steel, super hollow ground, very thin behind the edge. I mean, just a wicked, wicked slicer with that recurve. Uh, but the looks of this, this, uh, I always say it looks like an Italian racing boat going through the waves and, uh, and I don't know with the wake back here, but it just looks like something beautiful to me. So Charles Marlowe, uh, if you don't know who he is, uh, go look him up on Instagram. That's probably the best way to see his work, uh, Instagram. And then there are a couple of people who collect him that I follow and, um, uh, yeah, I, you may still be able to get this. I know he had the Bullpup also a uh, with Boker, a smaller production, uh, a smaller knife, a clip point that was also very lauded uh, that I that I never got. But Charles Marlowe, love, the, love his designs. Next up is Matt Chase and Hogtooth Knives. Matt Chase, as you know, uh, is the guy who built my Nova One knives based on this platform, this handle and blade length, but with my uh, buoy uh, blade design. And I've been carrying this knife for a couple of years now, uh, about three years, ever since I got it. And it is, uh, this is the one that really got me seriously carrying fixed blade knives on an EDC uh, basis. It really, 
um, taught me what I like and what I require in a knife, especially with the new way I was carrying it, which is at the three o'clock position. When I first started carrying fixed blade knives, it was ones I was making and I was carrying them on, on my back, which uh, after landing on my back in a martial arts section uh, session and landing on a trainer that was back there, I, I discovered that's a bad place. Uh, so I moved it around to the side and that required something smaller and uh, something with rounded handles and uh, something easily stashable in the waistband. And that was this knife, the Tonto, the EDC Tonto. And uh, it is small, it is simple, and it is perfection. And uh, so that is why I asked uh, to make my first uh, collaboration knife with a custom maker, uh, a collaboration with Matt Chase on that platform with my blade. So uh, that worked out great. But he also does... Um, he also has uh, knives like the Ruffian, this one you've seen me uh, carry and talk about a lot. Uh, this is a hollow ground, um, long clip point blade. I, I guess you call that a long clip point. Uh, and it just carries awesome. It's about a five inch blade uh, from, from here to the tip, from the handle to the tip. Uh, yet it carries awesome with that um, rounded handle. And um, so Matt is a 30 year knife maker. He was a Marine Corps scout sniper, uh, used knives in the field, not to take out anyone, but to, to, to live and to do his job as a sniper and a scout. And uh, he carries that into all of his blade designs, uh, including uh, the ones that he forges. These are the knives he makes, uh, it, you know, in batches, but he does uh, singular um, forged knives that are exquisite. My, 50, uh, my 50th birthday knife is one I always show off, but didn't want to show that here because that was my design, basically, and he executed it. These are his designs, and they are, they're amazing, especially if, you're, if you want to get into actually carrying a fixed blade knife. He's got some great knives for that. And uh, the EDC Tonto I've used to feather stick kiln-dried wood, and it's worked better than almost anything. Next up is Fred Perrin, a French, I always call him French badass Fred Perrin. He was a French commando and all sorts of, <laughs> he, he just, if you, if you read, just read up on Fred Perrin, P-E-R-R-I-N. Um, I don't know much about him, uh, except that he was a commando and that he knows a lot about killing people by hand and with knives and other tools. And he's a very charming guy. I met him at Blade Show 2022, and that's when I bought this from him. This is one of his designs that he has produced. And it is a super thin, full flat ground, uh, little, little round the neck buoy or drop in the pocket buoy. It's got great jimping. And um, what, what I really like about him is that he modernizes the traditional French fighting knife and combines it with, uh, the American buoy all the time. And uh, what I mean by that is the, the traditional French fighting knife looks a lot like the traditional French chef's knife in that it has a, uh, a pinched handle up by the ricasso and it flares out as it, as it uh, gets to the pommel and the blade itself acts as the guard. Um, so all of his designs incorporate that concept, though he adds contouring into the handle and um, finger wells and that kind of thing. Uh, but his front finger choil is, is always this sort of oblong shape and, uh, not like a, a perfect semicircle, but oblong. And, and it occurred to me why that is when you hold this in your hand with that oblong shape, um, your finger gets pressed against this flat part, uh, towards the back of the finger well, and that can'ts the blade edge downward. And I'll show you here with this, uh, with this Spiderco produced street buoy. Same thing is happening there. It is, it is uh, making the edge, uh, putting the edge at a more advantageous angle for, for slashing. We all know that slashing is way less effective in stopping uh, an opponent or stopping an attacker than a thrust is, but it's also way, a way more natural motion than thrusting. Uh, as the um, Roman army discovered uh, before they designed the gladius. Uh, so here, if you can have any sort of advantage in that slash by by uh, making the angle of the blade point downward, uh, you, you should take advantage of that. 
A very interesting dude. I will always uh, want more Perrin in my collection. Spider-Go has done a couple of collaborations, including a folder. Uh, that's very, very cool. Uh, never talked to that man, though I'd like to. All right, next up is Bob Terzuola, who was on an early episode of the Knife Junkie podcast, uh, episode 38, pre-video, but uh, man, definitely worth a listen. He's a, such a cool dude. Uh, this is the only knife I have by him, and it's not even by him. It's by Civivi, but it's his design. Uh, Bob Terzuola made folders. Custom folders are very uh, 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 desirable and expensive and hard to come by. And, uh, uh, some of our friends like, like Edwin Callow, you can see some on his, on his channel. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, he started off, uh, living in Guatemala, making, uh, fixed blades for mercenaries and commandos and military types. And, uh, this Civivi, uh, Tomashi E really harkens back to those days of his fixed blade design. Um, I love the shape of that handle. It is super ergonomic and fits the hand so perfectly. That's what super ergonomic means, I guess. Uh, but also there's jimping on the blade so you can come up over top and uh, use this in a close carving kind of situation. But really, we know this is a, a fighting and self-defense knife. So if you're someone who uh, likes to use that, 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 um, thumb reinforced Filipino grip. Um, it's there for you. Um, just outstanding, um, design. And of course, since it's Civivi and, uh, under the wee blanket, it's, it's so wonderfully produced and I highly recommend you get this knife. Uh, it's under a hundred dollars and it comes with a great sheath and a really great, uh, tech lock, uh, also, which was originally designed by Bob Terzuola. But uh, I've replaced it with this so I can carry it in the waistband. This actually does ride in the waistband pretty nicely. That's the, uh, uh, that is uh, Bob Terzuola. So check him out. Okay, last up and uh, arguably, well, I'm not going to put favorites on any of these. But last up is the great and powerful William Harsey Jr. Um, he's just uh, really, to my eye, one of the most, uh, has the most refined designs. Let's start with. Let's start with this classic dagger that he designed. Um, first of all, it's in a really nice um, Chattanooga Leatherworks sheath. There's their logo. Under the RMJ logo of companies, RMJ, makers of the Tomahawks and then American Tomahawk Company and, and Chattanooga Leatherworks. Okay, this is uh, a really incredible design by William Harsey Jr. because he has managed to take something as simple and as as classic and as overdone throughout history as the dagger and made a new version that is stupendous and beautiful. Um, you've got a, a six and a half inch blade with uh, hollow ground bevels and a medial ridge to, to keep it rigid and uh, all the way up to the front because the real mission for this is going through hard targets going into soft targets through hard targets so you got to keep it rigid uh, and keep that blade thickness all the way to the tip as much as possible you have a uh, cross guard here forward uh, canted cross guard so you can put your thumb up against it for pushing if that's your thing but in any way it unlike the k bar which cants inward which i never quite understood cants in towards the handle uh the outward canted quillions really make sense to me not only like i said for pushing uh but just to accommodate the hand you know and the fat of the hand and and that kind of thing this uh this g10 handle is uh fluted in a spiral uh pattern and then sandwiches this full tang blade completely. The tang protrudes here with a little noggin knocker. Uh, but look at the, the Coke bottle shape. So perfect ergonomics, perfect blade. By the way, the ergonomics work whether you're in this sort of flat shovel grip with your thumb on the blade or whether you're like this, use it, taking advantage of the edges. Uh, the, the ergonomics are perfect. The blade is perfect. Uh, everything about this knife is perfect. Um, that's William Harsey Jr. Now look at some of his single edge knives that that uh, are produced uh, by by uh, Chris Reeve knives. You'll be blown away. And then here you have the Spartan Harsey folder. 
a superlative folder, uh, that hard use American style design with the thick, thick uh, slabs and the incredible um, washer action. And then those lines, Bill Harsey Jr. Uh, God, I got to get more of his work in my collection. I think next up will be the Bill Harsey fighter from from Spartan. I got to start where I can afford it. Right. And then who knows, maybe later I sell off some knives and I get a Chris Reeve. Uh, a Chris Reeve uh, version of one of his knives. Anyway, I've gone on too long. Thanks for listening. If you've been watching, if you've been here this long, I appreciate it. You know, I've been going on at length recently, especially with my collection videos. So uh, thanks for hanging in there and checking out all the knife content. Those collection videos have been a source of shame for me. I have been a glutton. I have been a materialist. I'm going to change my ways. Be sure to become a patron and help me be more of a glutton. Just kidding. Uh, becoming a patron uh, helps us pay for servers, helps us pay for upgrades and materials, which we're doing right now. Uh, so thank you for everything. We greatly appreciate it. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast